if you're writing software and you're not having fun doing it, that's a problem. I've spent over 20 years building software for both large companies and my only tiny SaaS products. And normally there's one small tweak that you need to make to fix this problem and make it fun again. So here are my seven ways to make writing software so fun that it feels illegal. Number one, I remember the first day that I started my first job ever and they gave me a Mac from the back of a cupboard somewhere. I realized that there was a delay between me typing something on the keyboard and it appearing on the screen. This made writing software an absolute nightmare, obviously. The problem is when there's a feedback delay, whether that's a delay between you typing out some code and it appearing on a web page, or you pushing some code and it being deployed by your CI process, it means that you can't see whether your changes are working or not. And by default, that just makes things frustrating and less fun and less productive. If you can put a bit of effort into fixing this problem, so the first solution for me was to badger my employer until they caved in and actually gave me a MacBook that worked. The other option is what I'm about to talk about in the next point. Number two, when I first started building SaaS products a few years ago, I was using a tech stack that required a lot of custom code to glue things together and it was slow to deploy. This meant that when I was building my first SaaS product that needed image upload, login and all this kind of stuff, it was not that fun. A few iterations later, I stumbled across a tech stack, Next.js and SST, that seems to work for me. That means I can just do things so much quicker. Now I've rebuilt that first web app with that tech stack. And the one thing I've learned is it might take a few iterations for you to find something that works for you. Even though not many other people seem to be using my tech stack, I don't really care because it works for me. So don't spend forever doing it, but there's a combination of technologies out there that's gonna make coding way more fun once you find it. Three, some people say that if you enjoy a hobby, that when you start getting paid to do it, you're gonna lose the love of it. I don't think that's the case for software development. If you're still in the learning stage and you haven't yet got paid for it, let me tell you that once you land a job or freelance gig or whatever, and you're getting paid, you're basically being paid to learn. Software development is a continual learning process and that's fun in itself. And when you're paid for that, well, that does kind of feel illegal <laughs> because you know that any skills that you're learning, frameworks, languages, tools that you're picking up, you're gonna be able to take that with you wherever you go next. And that's really what people mean when they talk about experience level for developers. It's how many different kinds of problems have you solved and what different solutions can you use. And when you get paid to do that, that's a lot of fun. I worked a couple of jobs that I did not enjoy that much. One of them, I was creating software to track royalties for the music industry. And it was as boring as it sounds. Not only that, I felt like the team wasn't that excited to create great software and everything was stuck together with glue and rubber bands. The point is that the software industry basically touches every single other industry. If you could click your fingers and make software disappear, then basically the world would stop. So even if you have just a few months development experience, there's still somewhere out there that you can work and add massive value. I think developers should do the work that they enjoy, whether that means working in a particular industry like gaming, e-commerce, media, whether that's working for a big company or startup, or whether that's getting into freelancing rather than being an employee. Despite what people say, I still think there's so much opportunity in software. And if you can take on that mindset, and find work that you enjoy, well, that's gonna be a lot more fun. Five, I spent 13 years basically doing backend development, creating APIs using a language called Java. For most of that time, I avoided using the front end. 
So when I quit my job a few years ago and ended up starting to build my own SaaS products, that was a challenge. So one option I could have done would have been to say, hey, I'm going to do this the Java way. I'm going to build everything in Java on the back end and then use some kind of template technology to render the front end. But that wouldn't have been that much fun. So instead, I decided to start again as a beginner because I'd heard about all of these dynamic JavaScript languages like React and Vue, and I was interested to give them a go. So however much experience you have, sometimes it's fun just to empty your mind, tell yourself you're going to start again as a beginner because actually if you've got these preconceived notions about how you should do something, how code should look or what kind of architecture you should use, that can actually slow down the learning process. So having started again as a beginner with these front-end technologies, there's something I'm using on a regular basis and they're just fun. Six. A couple of years ago, I was working in Lisbon for a month and I remember going to a coffee shop and overhearing a conversation these two guys were having at a table Basically, there was one person coaching another person on learning how to code. I think this is very cool that you can basically have your entire work within a single laptop. Take it anywhere with you and you've got everything you need there to basically build software. I've got a MacBook Air now and I recently was in the Canary Islands and before that I was in Japan. And I think there's something fun about being able to code in these random locations, whether that's in a coffee shop on a train, or even just in your Airbnb apartment. It's a lot of fun. Seven. The first couple of years I was working coding jobs, I was kind of clueless. But I remember when I was about 25, some new recruits came into the office and they had us do some pair programming. Suddenly I realized how much I actually knew. I knew how to turn requirements into code. I knew how to call the database. I knew how to write tests. I'd learned a lot without necessarily realizing that. If you can recognize that you have a lot of valuable skills that other people would like to learn, then documenting your journey can be one of the most fun things to do. I've been doing this right here on YouTube for six years now, and I've grown a decent audience. Not only that, but I can use the audience I built on YouTube to launch my own projects. If you want to learn to share your coding skills and build an audience yourself, then check out this video next where I share my three-part framework that helps you do just that.